Hey guys, what's up? It's Depermito. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here in FL Studio and I'm going to be breaking down g Easy type beats. g Easy has been around for a long time and he's actually got quite a few styles of beats, but I think he's really come into his own style recently with his last couple albums and I like it a lot. I think it's pretty cool. This beat is actually one that I made last night, but I figured that it really just worked really well for this style and I wanted to break it down on this video. So let's get into the breakdown. First off, I started with this pattern here. It was just kind of a bell kind of pad sound, really simple. So I rent that out and then I dropped it into Fruity Slicer and then I just cut it up like this. Also inside of Fruity Slicer I turned up the attack and decay time quite a bit to give it more of a gated feel. Then I also threw halftime on it and turned the mix down to 50%. Then I also threw RC20 on it just gave it some wobble. I wanted some distortion to kind of make it a little bit cracklier and then I also added some reverb. Altogether it sounds like this. So for the main melody of these beats, you're usually going to be using a pad or bells or piano or something like that. You could also use strings maybe, although that's a little bit harder to pull off for a main melody. Or you could also just sample something kind of like a vintage, kind of like a Drake type sample. For the melody, generally you're going to want to keep it really simple and kind of repetitive. Also give it kind of a dark feeling most of the time. If you do decide to go with a pad, it is often going to have this kind of gated feeling that you can get by either using an actual gate effect or my preferred way of doing it. I think it sounds a little bit better is by putting it in Fruity Slicer and turning up the attack and decay times a little bit, and that's what I did on this one. Halftime is also really common in the melodies of these beats, so I would definitely play around with that on whatever you're using. For the counter melodies on these beats, you're usually going to be using pads, bells, strings, pianos, choirs, synths, stuff like that. I decided to go with a piano, and I just made this pattern right here. It fits a lot of the same vibes as the main melody, dark, simple, repetitive, stuff like that. Then I threw Fruity Filter on this. I just turned up the bandpass a little bit, turned the high pass up quite a bit and turn the low pass down quite a bit. That just gives it a much more background and kind of filtered vintage effect. Then to add to that, I just threw RC20 on it. We've just got some noise, a little bit of wobble and distortion, tiny bit of reverb, but not much. And then also some of this magnetic stuff over here. So altogether, it sounds like this. So for this pattern, you can see that I just used some really basic triad chords here. We've just got an F minor chord. Then here we've got a C major chord, although I inverted the top two notes down so that it fits in with the rest of it. Then we've got the exact same chord, except for the C is brought down an octave. And then we've just got another F minor chord. Then I just copied all the root notes down right here. But overall, this pattern is really simple. And that's all I actually did for the melody. So now let's move on to the drums. So for the hi-hats, you're just going to be using a standard trap hi-hat sound. And the pattern is usually going to be based off of a two-step pattern, then you can either just leave it at that or sometimes you might want to add some rolls. I just went with the cardiac hi-hat and the pattern sounds like this. Next, I took a second hi-hat sound and I added in a few rolls. This is what it sounds like. Then I just added this clap. You could also use kind of a tighter trap snare sound. So for your bass pattern, you're usually going to use an 808. It's going to be kind of short to medium. You don't want anything super long. And you're not going to want it to be very distorted. You're going to want it to be fairly clean, maybe a little bit of distortion, but nothing too crazy. You could also use a sub bass and just switch back and forth between that and the 808. If you do go with a sub bass, you're probably going to want it to have a little bit more distortion than you would with the 808. Now for your 808 pattern, you're going to want to keep it really simple. It's mostly just going to be based off of that standard trap kick pattern. Pattern. As you can see, I did actually decide to add in a few slides. That's just to bring the 808 down to the note that it's on in each bar. This is what the pattern sounds like. So as you can see, I just stuck to this kind of simple progression. One thing I should note is this little pattern that's right here. As you can see, it's just dotted quarter notes all the way through. Usually it would be something like that where there's a gap, but in a lot of G Easy beats, there's just this straight dotted quarter note pattern that goes all the way through on the 808, and I think it sounds pretty cool. Next, I just added this open hat pattern here. It's very simple. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> 
If you decide to use an open hat, you're usually going to want a sound that's kind of cut short. You don't really want it to die all the way out. You kind of just want it to end abruptly. At least that's what's most common in these beats. For the pattern, just keep it really simple and pretty standard. It's nothing too complicated. And that's all I decided to add to this beat. So next, let's move on to the mixing. I already showed you all of the effects that I put on things. There's not too much going on, just half time, some filters and RC20, nothing on the drums. Then I just leveled it. If you guys want to see more in depth how I mix my beats, you can check out my mixing tutorial, which I'll put up in the card in the corner. Then I just just arranged it. It's a very standard layout and I'll play it at the end of the video, but first I'd like to thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Also check out some of my other type beat tutorials. Make sure you go over and follow me on Instagram. When I reach 2,000 followers, I'm dropping a free MIDI kit. Also subscribe here on YouTube. When we reach 400 subscribers, I'm dropping another free loop kit. You can also check out my 300 subscriber loop kit, which will be linked in the description. Also in the description will be my Patreon. There's some pretty cool stuff over there. We've got exclusive videos. You can also get my Academy a weight drum kit for free. It's only a few bucks a month. It's definitely worth it in my opinion, so please go check it out. But yeah, that's about it. So thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it, and I'll talk to you all in the next video. How did the Primero make this slap so hard?